I'm Juma Brenda. I'm a filmmaker. A certified start and improve your business trainer by international Lab organization. The founder of Jumsi Media. I'm also a teacher and a storyteller. Welcome to another episode of the Necklace Forum and today our guest is Brenda Juma. Brenda Juma is an author and all those many descriptions that she's given you. So Brenda, karibu sana. Asante. I'm so glad to see that you have a new book. Yeah. Eh? Otis and the Lake. Hey, man, the Otis. <laughs> You know, by the way, when I was coming up with the name, I just thought of why not a simple name that people can be yeah, exactly. Yeah. And yeah. right now, so many have been, hey, Mama mm -hmm. Otis. Mama Otis. Don't worry, Otis, Atakuja to at his own time. Yeah. But I think I'm, I'm, I'm excited first to think mm -hmm. like, one, the name is very cultural oriented. Mm -hmm. Because right now, even when we have children's books, mm -hmm. we do not have children's books from our culture on stories about our people. Mm -hmm. And so when I see a name like Otis and the lake, I mean, we come from the lakeside. Yeah. I think this is quite encouraging that even our culture and our stories, things like our names mm. and the way we do stuff like fishing traditionally can still be written in books. All our children, like my daughter really struggles with the Luo, can be able to understand, even if she doesn't get Luo, mm. at least she can be able to get uh, the practices. Mm. So tell me about Otis and the Lake. <laughs> <laughs> Otis, wow. So, like, I like to tell stories. Mm -hmm. I, I grew up being told stories by my grandma, mm -hmm. and I come from the lake region. So that's what inspired the book. In fact, if you look at it, if you're very keen, you'll notice that this Homer Hills. Uh -huh. Yeah, when they were doing the illustrations, yes. I just wanted them to have a feel of where I come from, you know. Great. Because there are no stories that um, revolve around the lake region, mm -hmm. specifically Homer Bay. So when, when I'm at home, and you go to the lake, say, in the evening, you'll definitely see a man fishing with his son yes. and all that. So that's what inspired Otis. Uh -huh. I just wanted a story that I could yes. relate with, uh -huh. a story that Kenyan kids can relate with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I just felt like o Otis is the perfect name for this book. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Now, why children's stories? <sighs> ZP, I love children. <laughs> I love kids, you know. There's a way they're just so authentic. Mm -hmm. And most of the time, I have two nephews. Yeah. So when we are sitting together, most of the time, the best they can tell you, Auntie Nipigie story. Nipigie, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So you end up telling them the same story over and over again. So it gave me a challenge. Why not just write something? You and know? reach out to many children. Reach out, yeah. yeah. Ah, that's nice. Now, Brenda. You do a lot of things, yeah? <laughs> uh, first and foremost, Brenda was my student at Kenyatta Yay! University. For those who don't know, I am a lecturer at Kenyatta University. So when I see some of my alumni students doing well, my dear, I mean, the pride of a teacher is this. So, <laughs> Brenda, first of all, so congratulations <laughs> yeah. on the book. Congratulations also on a lot of the things that you do. I think it's exciting to imagine. Do you think this can be produced? Yes, why not? Why not? Because like um, production in terms of um, Film motion or picture, theater, yeah. Yeah. When, you, when you go to YouTube or any other social media platform, you find that there's so many Western things, you know, like mm -hmm. um, just, just a, random, uh, a random mention we have, Baby Shark, it has over a billion yes. views. So my challenge has always been, Brenda, why not do something locally that our kids can relate mm -hmm. to, you know? We grew up with very many songs, Embe Umbe and all that, why not yes. incorporate them into motion picture and just create a vibe mm -hmm. on the young generation, yeah. Oh, wow. Now, Brenda, mm -hmm. children aside, mm -hmm. you are a trader with International <laughs> Labor Organization. <laughs> I registered for mm -hmm. a training as a business mentor because I want to really change the entertainment industry mm -hmm. and the creative industry. I want people to look at art from a perspective of business, you know. Great, great. Because we are amazing people. Yeah. If somebody just came up with this thing, you know, somebody will just take this table and craft it into a whole different thing. It needs a lot of creativity, True. a lot of time, mm -hmm. a lot of brain work. So you need to cash out from your 
from your, your talent. Creativity, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So that's why I did the training and I'm a certified trainer. Uh -huh. So congratulations. Yeah, so <laughs> you want management. <laughs> Let's have it. And again, yeah. I also noticed uh, us in the entertainment industry, we are so brilliant. We are very creative. Great. Yeah, but true, now true. we don't have the capacity some of us don't have the capacity to do what we want you know when we were in campus we'll be told your script yako is so eh you need a budget yes. but i'm like film is like any other business zippy mm -hmm. but now putting your ideas putting your business into now mm -hmm. a neat business plan and just yes. Pitching your work to a potential investor and telling, okay, here, this is my business plan. Yes. Yeah. If you invest this, then you'll get this, this and I'll get this. Yeah. yeah. So, people who are still hustling with how to manage finances, I'm here to help you. Oh, great. Especially yeah, the creative industry. Industry. Manze, we are very creative, yes. you know. And again, ZP, we need to, we need to also to look just beyond now, you know. What's our retirement kind of a life? What mm -hmm. life do you want to live when you retire from the art industry? So tell me, uh, as a trainer of uh, International Labour Organization, uh, where do you do your trainings? When do you do them? Are you the one who organizes them or is it ILO who organizes them? Mm -hmm. How does it, if somebody wanted to come and uh, join your classes mm -hmm. as a trainee, how do they join? So we have, ILO has made the training in different models, mm -hmm. like uh, we have, uh, generate your business idea that's the first step because a business idea is very mm -hmm. normal you can you can come up with an idea like okay I can sell this book you know mm -hmm. I can make this story book but you haven't thought in depth about it mm -hmm. so the first step of generating your business idea we guide you how you can make your business viable you know mm -hmm. you can have so many ideas but is it viable mm -hmm. because for example, ZP, you want to you want to sell water. There's mm -hmm. so many people vending water out here, but now what makes your water business unique? Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So that's the first training that normally takes two to three days. Mm -hmm. Then once you've graduated from, you've generated your idea, you move now to start your business where we take you through business plan, how do you do your staffing, costings, financials, and all that. Then now that takes like three, four to five days then you now move to your improve your business. Now this is for somebody mm -hmm. who's into business, but now you feel like things are not going well and I need to take it to another level. Yes. Then you move to improve your business and the last stage now is how to expand your business. <music>write books yeah, even true. I mean when you look at Facebook I'm mm. one of those Facebook storytellers <laughs> yeah. we write a lot of stories on Facebook mm. and even on blogs and mm. stuff so mm. for you to turn that idea into a book that can now generate money by the guys this book is a 200 shillings only only <laughs> my guys there's no excuse yeah. there's no excuse you buy five, she delivers, mm. you distribute around. So that when your child can pick a story now, they mm. are sharing a story. Mm. So when you took your, your stories mm. from a blog, from your manuscripts, mm. to turn it into this, mm. I think it takes a lot of courage. A lot. Because um, let, let me talk like now, a, a fellow author. Uh, by the time I decided to do 500 books, the very oh. first time, mm. the first batch, I was like, I don't know how I'm going to sell these mm. books, but by faith you know mm. because as a business person you have to put in some faith mm. so as in what did it take you mm -hmm. to turn this book from a story to, yeah. to a, a money making book yeah. <laughs> one thing people have to know is that writing children literature is quite different from writing adult literature mm -hmm. like this book took me hey, I think maybe GZP just two years because yes. you write the first draft, you read it, you feel like, hey, this English it's is too, too mature. Much, yeah. You turn down again, you turn down until you're able to give it to a child, read uh -huh. it, and they're able to relate well with the story. Uh -huh. Then comes the illustrations, you know, yes. you have to get somebody to illustrate. And not just illustrating, somebody who understands the story and uh, represents it the way it's supposed to be, you uh -huh. know. 
Yeah, and uh, printing and all that. So yeah. is it self-published or did you get yourself self published? Self-published. Mainstream publishers can be tedious, especially if you're studying, <laughs> starting know. out. It's really <laughs> tedious. And I'm like, uh, I gave myself a challenge. Yeah. The, the journey is tedious, but when you sit with millions of, man, of manuscripts, manuscripts you know, waiting, waiting, yeah. You know, so you, you can do something about it. Actually, I think uh, one of the challenges a lot of uh, writers mm. face is uh, you're told if you do not use a publisher, your book may not go far. Mm. My question is, what is far? <laughs> <laughs> As in, yeah. Because uh, people look at it like far to a lot of people is uh, your book being taken to schools to become a set book. But trust me, even for the best of publishers, we can only have three books being studied in the school system mm. every three years or four. Mm. So how many people can get there? Mm. So you know, for self-publishing, if you really want to make money, mm. that's number one. And if you know you are an aggressive salesperson, because don't self-publish mm. if you don't know how to sell. Mm because you'll have the stock and pile of books. You have to be your first cheerleader, yeah, if not the only one. Yes. Dry, so they say, do not beat your own drum, but as a, a self-publisher, <laughs> you must beat your own drum. Yeah, you get true, what I mean? Yeah. You go somewhere and you introduce yourself. Like right now, Brenda, mm. every time you introduce yourself, you say, I'm the publisher of, of Otis, Otis and, and the Lake. Lake. <laughs> A children's storybook, story yeah. and you carry a few, and everywhere you go, you mm. find yourself selling mm. 10, mm -hmm. 10, 10, 10. Mm -hmm. And I know uh, there are a few children's publishers like mm. Evelyn Ongoko. I don't know if mm. you've read her books mm -hmm. and poetry. Mm -hmm. She does not stock her books in many bookshops, but mm. they're distributed in schools, and she mm. goes and sells them mm. during music festivals and mm -hmm. drama festivals, mm -hmm. and she has sold plenty. Mm -hmm. And I look at these, and I'm like, I think this is more like like it. Mm -hmm. This is the thing you go with to every wedding, mm -hmm. so not to every funeral, but yes, to every funeral. <laughs> you go with it to yeah. every function mm -hmm. and you're always carrying even mm -hmm. 20 mm -hmm. and you'll find yourself selling mm -hmm. the 20 every mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm looking forward to seeing this book getting sold out. If you've printed yeah. 500, they should be get sold out in three yeah, months. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so Brenda, I, so one, I'm very excited that you could turn this mm -hmm. into money. Mm. Yeah, I'm seeing money here. Yeah, <laughs> book, this book business. Yes. <laughs> book business. Yeah, book yes. business. You know, Zippy, one thing I came to realize is that if I get out of this place, yes. start to commit to it. Exactly. So exactly. kids are everywhere. Every day mm -hmm. kids are being born. But uh, they need to read, you know. Yes. We are, we are moving into a culture where everything is digital, mm -hmm. you know. But still, if somebody could still translate this into a digital book, do it. Exactly. And let our kids read. Yeah. That would be great. Mm. Now, Brenda. Yeah. You are a performer, Ish. you are an author, <laughs> you are a filmmaker, <laughs> now you are a business person or a business trainer. Where do you see Brenda in, uh, you're very young, so I don't want to say in the next 10 years. Let me say in the next <laughs> 20 years, where do you want to see Brenda? Ish. <laughs> mm -hmm. I want to change lives, that's it. Yeah. How do you want to change this life? <laughs> <laughs> Zippy, I'd like to grow. Yeah. Grow like for example in um in the motion picture I want to grow, you know. I want to see my name somewhere. Zippy, you know when I say somewhere, you know what I mean. In, I the, don't in know. the film industry. They don't know. Somewhere, yeah, like you know, doing big things. Yeah. Shooting films, you know, getting screened in festivals, international festivals mm -hmm. and all that. But my main goal, Zippy, is to inspire. I believe Oh, Zippy, when I leave this world one day, yes. I want people to say Brenda inspired me. Mm -hmm. I think that's the most important thing. Yeah, yeah. Because at times, I, I love children a lot and they come to my house, you know, Auntie Niambia's story, and we read a story, we laugh, and they leave home very happy, and mm -hmm. I believe that is changing somebody's life. Maybe they were just low, you know. There was a time you had a YouTube channel. Uh -huh. my, my children used to listen to your stories. stories. Yeah, and uh, you can go and look for jo Brenda Joma on YouTube. Uh, I think those those were really nice stories. Why? What? What? What is your plan with that? Okay, let me just backtrack you a little bit on the storytelling thing. Zippy COVID came, and people people the people who expected that people who did not expect, mm -hmm. and I think COVID affected me badly. Yes. Zippy badly. When I say badly, I mean badly. So. I was very low, mm -hmm. very low. So I just needed something 
to keep me happy and i said okay fine Storytelling speaks to you, Brenda. Why not storytell to kids? Yes. And that's what I've been doing. Even in the hood, I get kids say, Sister, sit to some story, kidogo. You nice. know? Yes. Yeah. And you know, sometimes uh, we look for, how do you call it? We look for our purpose mm. too far. Mm -hmm. And that your purpose could just be here in telling stories to children, Brenda. Mm. You know, reading stories to them, telling them stories, and mm. even going to storytelling festivals mm -hmm. and telling kids stories. Mm. And uh, Somebody else might look at it like, oh, she's just Brenda the storyteller. But this can really take you far, Brenda. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I've seen uh, storytellers going, I mean, uh, traveling all over the world. <laughs> to I also festivals. want to travel. Who doesn't love to and travel? I've been given money for Gosh, this. Who doesn't and love money? Before Brenda goes, I just want her to read for us a little. Oh, okay. Yes. Nice. Yeah. So welcome to storytelling session today with your teacher, teacher Brenda. And today we are going to read Otis and the Lake. Okay, let's go. So Otis lived near the great Lake Victoria. His father was a fisherman who fished in the lake. His father would leave early with his fishing net and come back in the evening. Sometimes he would come back with lots of fish. Should I continue? Yes. What are the next job? So you should buy the book and know. In the evening when he came yes. with lots of fish, fish. what, what happened? happened? <laughs> exactly. What oh my. I think I'm excited. I'm getting this for my daughter, oh. for my neighbor. Oh. Because I, I want my, my daughter and my neighbor, there are two who are around mm. her age, seven and eight, so that they can also be able to read these mm -hmm. and enjoy it together and they can laugh about what is mm -hmm. on the lake and learn a thing or two. Mm -hmm. So me, I'm getting three copies. Oh, and so when cute. I'm going to Shags, I'll also get some more oh, copies okay. because children need to read stories from our country, stories about our mm. culture, stories about our people. Yes. And so for me, that's why I looked at this and I'm like, Otis on the lake for me is just what we have been looking for. Mm. And also, uh, this is a very niche market. We have got many people writing uh, stories for adults, I mean, mm. storybooks, mm. novels, even movies. Mm. A lot of people mm. create movies mm. uh, that are at least uh, 16 plus, that's mm. the classification, or mm. even uh, um, yeah. 10 plus and 13 plus. But for this segment mm. of kids, you know, below mm. the age of 10, we have got very few films, mm -hmm. very few books, mm. especially, let me talk about Africa, mm. especially in Africa. Mm. And yet, like right now, they're the ones who are at home full time. Yeah. They are the greatest mm. consumers. Mm. So when we talk about kids do, no, uh, do not have anything to watch, mm. then we blame ourselves that kids mm. are watching mm. things mm. that are not of, of the right mm. age. The question is, what do they need to watch? What do they need to read? Eh? Otis. My, my joy would be if this book would reach a thousand libraries in Kenya. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A thousand libraries. So anyone would like to support a library where you are, please, 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 please get in touch. For 200 shillings, shillings only. only. <laughs> yeah, and even those people want to buy bulk, even a thousand copies, 500 oh. copies, my joy would be zippy if this book could reach every library. It will. It will. Yeah. It will. Yeah. Now, Brenda, you've talked to your 20 plus years yes. later. Uh, now, talk to, talk to Brenda Joma, who just finished Form 4. Focus. Focus. And get a mentor to guide you through in life. Well, one thing I came to realize is that if I look at my, my friends list, I notice I have um, most of my friends are quite old and quite tiny. Mm -hmm. Like, um, Zippy's daughter is my friend and she's eight. Eight, yes. Eight. You know, <laughs> there's so much you can learn from kids. If yes. you're not stressed, well, she'll tell you, Brenda, unaka funny. Mm. Because they're very honest. The old will not sugarcoat anything. They'll mm. just tell you, you're not decently dressed. Yes. I think you're not, you're not focused. Mm -hmm. So I, I think if you can get a mentor to guide you through, and if you could just stay focused. Yes. Your final words to everyone who's watching? People yes. love me so much. Yeah. Because if you can post a book online and people inbox you just asking you, by the way, there are people who have even been boxed me, they want to publish books. Somebody's like, mm -hmm. you know, I have a manuscript. How do I get it printed? I guide them. So mm -hmm. it means a lot. Thank you for the love, you know. Yes. Thank you so much. I really thank my parents so much for 
nurturing that talent because if they didn't nurture it zipi mm -hmm. say what wange part of this exactly yeah, yeah exactly mm. and i just i just have a, a good uh, support system my sister my friends you know and my brothers yeah oh, thank you thank you guys so so much for watching and until next time let's keep it here at the necklace forum subscribe to our youtube page on dr zipio court let your friends watch and let's empower each other and until next time bye bye bye